This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create an architectural column in ZBrush? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have an example file here loaded in. So this is a fluted dork column here. And so the column itself is actually pretty simple to create inside of ZBrush. So I have the plinth, I also have a capital, and then I have the cylinder, or the main shape of the column here. And then finally, I have a capsule part that is then being applied with an array mesh to get the fluted area. So I'm going to go through the process of creating the middle part here, so the fluted area. And then we're going to briefly cover how to create the capital and also the plinth, which is just basically using some of the Z modeler processes. So to start off, I'm going to hit comma on my keyboard to go into Lightbox here. And in Lightbox, I'll make sure I'm in the Project tab. And then I want to navigate to the Primitives ZPR file here. I'm just going to double click this and then click No to Saving Changes. And this is now going to load in like so. Now this file contains a bunch of different tools that are all set up to be used with the ZModeler brush. So I'm going to come over here and grab the Cylinder No Edge here. And then I'm going to turn on my polyframes so you can see what this mesh looks like. So this just is a cylinder. It's got a center point on each of the caps, and then it has no edge loops going around the middle. So I'm going to turn off the floor and turn off perspective, and I now first want to rotate this model. So I'm going to switch to the Gizmo 3D by going to Move, Scale, or Rotate at the top. I also want to turn off Live Boolean if it's on. And I'm now going to take this and rotate in screen space, and while I'm rotating, I want to hold down Shift to activate the snapping, and I want to snap it to that 90 degrees. So it's going in this vertical fashion here. Next, I want to come across the scale Y here, and I want to scale this up to make it a little bit long and skinny. So something like that. And that will start as my base for my column. Now, the next thing I want to do is with the column here, I want to make the top part of it skinnier than the bottom part. So I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard, which is going to give me the mask pen. And I want to hold Control and Alt at the same time and then drag this across the top vertices of the column here. Now, when you add the Alt modifier to the mask, what this is going to do, it's going to mask the entire model and then unmask the parts that are inside the mask rectangle here. So think of this more as a selection mode We're using the mask brush. So if I come over here and hover across the top part of the column here and then release, all the other vertices on this part here will be masked except for those top edges. So now if I come across the Gizmo 3D and click go to Unmasked Mesh Center, this should take the Gizmo 3D right to the top there. It's also going to center it in the center of that column. And now I can use the scale option here and just scale that top in some. So getting that taper now with my column. And now I can switch back to draw and I can hold control and drag off on a blank spot on my canvas to clear the mask. So that is the initial start of my column there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to append this little capsule shape here because I want to go through and I want to add some flutes to this. So I'm going to come to my subtool list here. I'm going to go to the append option and I'm going to append in that capsule. This is now going to append it in like so. Now I want to select that capsule there. I'm going to rotate the side, go back to the Gizmo 3D. I'm going to rotate this in Y 90 degrees. And then rotate it again in 90 degrees, so it's in the same direction as the column, and then move it out a little bit. And then I want to scale this down so it's pretty tiny, so something like this, because I want these to generate that flute. And now if I zoom in on this model here, you'll see it has a similar setup to the cylinder. So the middle area here has no subdivisions or no tessellation. So this is going to allow me to grab just the top part, and use the Gizmo 3D along with Move to change the size of this without distorting it. So I'm going to switch back to that Gizmo 3D again and hold down that Control key to get the mask pen. I'm going to add the Alt modifier. So I'm holding down Control and Alt. And I'm going to drag across the top of that capsule there and release. So you'll see everything is masked except for that area that was contained in that rectangle. And now I can use the Gizmo 3D to move this up. So I want to move it all the way up so it's close to the top of my cylinder there. Hold control and drag my mask off. Now I'm going to hold control alt again and grab that bottom part, move that down to there, and then clear my mask. And now I should have something like this. So now I want to position this closer to the edge of my cylinder there. I also want to rotate this some so it has the similar angle. 
So I'm just gonna take the rotation option here and just rotate that a little bit. And then I wanna bring this in so it bumps into the surface of that cylinder. So something like that. I can come in and adjust this by using the Gizmo 3D, just move it. And now with this set up, I wanna turn off my polyframes here and then go back to draw so you can see this. And now over here in the subtool area, I wanna set my capsule shape to subtractive and then I'm gonna activate the live Boolean. So this is now taking that capsule and it's now subtracting it with the live Boolean preview into my cylinder shape. Now you'll notice the cylinder shape is showing some tessellation. So I'm gonna go select that quick. I'm gonna activate the dynamic subdivisions. So I'm gonna go to the geometry tab here, go to dynamic subdivisions and turn on dynamic. And these shapes in this primitive file are set up with creasing already. So when you activate dynamic subdivision, they should smooth nicely. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the capsule. So select the capsule, go to geometry, dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic. And now I'm getting that flute is now appearing soft and smooth and the cylinder is appearing the same as well. So now that I have one of these areas generated on the pillar here, I wanna repeat this around it. And to do this, I'm gonna use the array mesh functionality. So I'm gonna go back to my tool palette. I'm gonna go down to the array mesh area and open this up and I wanna activate the array mesh. Now, since I have that capsule shape as the selected subtool, when I turn on array mesh, I can now start taking this and having it go around that cylinder. So after I activate array mesh, the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna reset the pivot of that shape. So I'm gonna turn on lock position and then I'm gonna click reset. And this is now going to take the array mesh option and it's going to throw the pivot point of that array mesh to the center of the world. So turning on array mesh, turning on lock position, and then clicking the reset option. Now after I've reset that pivot to the center of the world, I can now come down to the bottom, go to rotate, and go to the Y area here and type in 360 and hit enter. And if I rotate around, you should see that I have a flute there and a flute there. So I have an array mesh, which is going 360 degrees around the center of the world in the Y axis, and I have two repeats for that flute. So now I can come over here and change this repeat option here, and this is going to allow me to control how many of those flutes are gonna appear on my model. Now, since this is an instance functionality with this array mesh, if I do any changes with the Gizmo 3D, it's going to affect the original object. So it's going to affect the object that's visible when I turn off array mesh, so my initial flute shape here. So if I scale this up or down, or shrink it, grow it, it's going to affect every single one of those objects that's in the array. So you can see now I can come through and I can tailor how these flutes are looking just by modifying the initial shape. So now I've gone through, I've taken that column, I've generated that capsule, and now I've arrayed that capsule around the cylinder there. So now after I have this done, I just need to add my plinth and also my capital. So I can go back to the subtool palette here, I can now append in another cylinder object, so I click append, then I'm gonna select the cylinder inner loops tool there. And now I'm gonna take this, I'm now going to rotate this with the Gizmo 3D in 90 degrees. I'm gonna move this up to the top here. So position it something like that, scale it down a little bit, and then kind of have it interpenetrate to that area there. And that is starting my top of my capital there. And then I can duplicate this shape as well. So I'm gonna end up with two of these. I'm gonna take this one and move it all the way down to the bottom and then scale this out, scale it down. Maybe make it a little stubbier, so something like that. Now give me a start for my base. So now I have the start of the capital and then start of the plinth down at the bottom. And now I can select either one of these and then turn on my polyframes here. And now I can start adjusting these models using the Z modeler brush. So you can see this model here, if I turn on solo, doesn't have any inner areas here. So I can come over to my brush palette, open this up. I can locate the Z modeler brush, which is over here. And now if I hover across an edge, I can press spacebar to go in the Z modeler edge action menu. In here, I can select something like multiple edge loops and I can start adding some edge loops here. So I can come across an edge and add a few of those guys. And then I can delete them as well by coming across and holding Alt and clicking. And then I can come across and add some more edge loops. And at this time, instead of using a modifier of specified elevation, I can use interactive elevation. And this will allow me to end up start generating shapes like this. 
I can get out a solo here so I can kind of see how this is going to be affected. And now I can come through and start tailoring my capital here. So just changing some of the shapes and forms and I'm just using the insert edge loops option here with that elevation change. So I can come through and modify this to create any sort of capital that I want in my mesh here. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, if I press D on my keyboard to activate that geometry dynamic subdivisions, you're gonna see some of these areas are still going to be harsh, and these are because there is creasing as applied to these different loops. So I can change the creasing as well by hovering over one of the edges and pressing spacebar to go back into the Z Modeler edge action menu. In here, I can select the action of crease, and now I can set my target to edge loop complete. And I can come across these and hold down Alt, and I can start uncreasing some of these creased areas here to get these to be smoother. So just coming across and holding Alt and clicking, this is now going to soften some of those areas. So I can come through and just tailor these a little bit more here. And if you find it difficult to kind of click these, you can go into solo mode, and that will be a little bit easier to kind of see. And then I can come out, so there I have the top of my capital there. Now I can do the same thing for the plinth. So I can select that subtool, go to solo, zoom into that guy here quick, use that Z modeler brush again, hover over the edge, set my action to insert, and then I can do single edge loop or multi edge loop. And then I come through and start adding some edges here. And then I can add some of that tapering as well with that interactive elevation. So just coming through and doing that. Can then modify my creasing by hovering over one of the edges, pressing spacebar to go to the edge action menu again, go to crease, make sure my target is edge loop complete, remove some of those creases out of there. Then I can go back to the tool palette, geometry area, turn on that dynamic subdivisions, and then get out a solo. And now you can see how I'm starting to generate that column. So that is a quick rundown on how you can quickly create a architectural column. So the example here is a fluted Doric column. And so the primary options here are just using simple primitives along with the live Boolean system and also a ray mesh, which is allowing you to get this fluted effect around the model. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy Z brushing.